In this video, we're gonna talk about meditation for athletes. So if you're an athlete and you wanna improve your mindset, your mental skills, your performance on the field, and the way you feel off the field, then this video is gonna be for you. So if you're new here, I'm Dan Blewett. I'm a former pro baseball pitcher. I started my journey with meditation back in my third year pro ball or before my third year because of my second season, I got beat up really bad and my confidence just took a huge nosedive. So I read a mental skills book, talked to the author, went to one of his camps, learned to meditate and honestly changed my life. And that's why I want to share some of my experiences with you. So if you feel like you could use more mental skills coaching and something is missing in your game, then maybe meditation is something that you can integrate that's going to work really well to reduce the doubts and the fears that stream through your head and give you more confidence to perform well under pressure when those clutch situations present themselves. So stick around. I'm going to put chapters in the description below. And you can also check out my mental skills book called This Slump Shall Pass. It's for all athletes of all sports. And I'm going to talk about some of the concepts in that book in this video as well. All right. So if you're an athlete, why should you meditate? Let's go over a couple of the quick reasons first. So number one, it helps you to de-stress, sort of slow your brain down. It's almost like getting a nap while staying awake. So it's going to help you reduce sort of like the doubts and fears and all that crazy chat that goes through your brain and some of the anxiety that you feel in both everyday life and in sports. And when you learn to accept and listen to those feelings, you can start to deal with them in a more productive, healthy way, both on the field and off. And meditation also helps you deal more positively with unknowns and a lot of the outcomes that you can't control both in the future and in the past. Will I make this team? Or I had a terrible game last week. You know, maybe I can't do this this week. Maybe, you know, these bad performances are haunting me. Meditation really helps you accept yourself and your shortcomings and stay in the present moment, which we'll talk more about. Meditation also gives you the tools to deal with pressure situations, where then that can set the tone for you to visualize yourself succeeding under pressure and really start to like play this mental video game with yourself as the main character and stay in the present moment, which we'll talk more about. When you do feel all those thoughts coming into your brain, the doubts, the fears, the anxieties, it helps you reset faster and get back to the present moment. So you can focus on your swing, the next shot, the next race, the next whatever it is, and get back to performing the way you know how. All right, so what actually is meditation? So when we think of this, a lot of times you think of, you know, a Buddhist monk sitting in the Himalayas, you know, for hours on end in a flowing robe and, you know, maybe a lot of chanting, all that sort of stuff. And I think that makes a lot of us feel intimidated that, you know, we have to have this sort of religious bent or we have to have this, we have to be in a temple or it has to be done really properly to, to get the benefit. And reality is meditation can be whatever you want it to be. It's super simple and you don't have to conform to any of these norms and it does not have it to be a big production. You don't have to conform to anyone's rules. You can do this exactly the way that you feel comfortable. That's the big thing I want you to take away. So at its core meditation is just sitting still being quiet and observing your own thoughts as they flow through without judgment that's really all it is so that can mean sitting with your legs crossed with your back against the wall with your eyes closed just listening to your breath it can mean laying on the floor just relaxed just sort of melting in the floor and letting whatever fl thoughts flow through your head meditation can take a lot of different forms but what we're talking about today is really just sitting being still being quiet, closing your eyes if you want to, and just observing the thoughts that flow in and out of your mind without judging them and just letting them pass through like a ship on the ocean. All right, so how do you actually meditate? So if you're an athlete and you wanna start this practice, let's start with setting. So number one, you wanna find a quiet, comfortable space where you're not gonna be bothered by tons and tons of noise or lights or people streaming in and out. So it could be your bedroom, it could be your basement, it could be anywhere that's quiet and kind of away from other people. And of course, if you're on the go, it could just be the corner of the airport. It could be, you know, the back of the athletic training room. It could be behind a tree behind, you know, the baseball field or behind the tennis courts or wherever you are. It can be wherever is practical and makes sense for that moment. But you don't want to be stuck in this place where, oh, if I don't find the perfect dead quiet place to meditate, then I can't do it. That's not true. I once meditated uh, in the back behind the fence of the baseball field with the team I was playing at. And I was sitting on this like hard dirt and it was just like the only place I could really find it. And as I was meditating, ants started crawling up my arms. So it's not always going to be perfect and that's completely okay. For me, I made the meditation about the ants. I watched them and instead of like freaking out and trying to flick them off me, I, I said, you know what? They're not going to hurt you just relax and like let them crawl over you and you can feel it. And that was sort of like my meditation for that day. I just like focused on the ants and tried, tried to stay calm 
as they kind of like explored my arms and my legs to a degree. So, you know, there's again, there's no wrong way to do it. But if you can choose your venue, try to find a place that's quiet and comfortable and out of the way, then you just need to carve out a couple minutes. And that could be two minutes all the way up to 30 minutes or more. But really just start easy. Say I'm going to set a timer for two minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes and then put your phone away sit on something comfortable. If you're sitting on a really hard floor, you're probably going to get stiff and you're going to want to move around too much. So find a cushion. You could take a cushion off of your couch. You could take a cushion off of one of your chairs. You could just, uh, you know, ball your comforter up on the ground. You could take your jacket and sit on your jacket. I like to prop my back up against a wall because if I sit without my back supported, I get really uncomfortable. Again, it doesn't matter. Just the only thing I would recommend against is laying down in your bed because you're going to be very prone to falling asleep. All right, so once you've got your comfortable space, you've got your phone for a timer or whatever, and your phone's on silent, and you're sitting on something comfortable, how do you then actually go about meditating? Well, you're just going to, number one, I'd say close your eyes. Number two, you just want to be as relaxed as possible. So try to melt into the ground and just take slow, long, deep breaths in and out and focus on being as relaxed as you can. And then there's a couple things you can do. You want to try to stay present, and that means trying to stay in the here and now and not worry about things in the future and not worry about things in the past. Stay in the present moment. And the, one of the easiest ways to do that is to listen and count your breath. So you can only breathe right now, right? You can't breathe in the past. You can't breathe in the future. So if you want to try to return yourself to the present moment where you're not worrying about stuff and you're not focused on that thing that could happen or has happened, if you just focus on listening to the whoosh of your breath, it's going to get your mind back to here and now. So I would recommend listening to your breath and or counting your breath. And so you can just go one, inhale, two, exhale. And you just keep doing that. And look, thoughts are going to flow in and out of your head like they're going to stream constantly. And that's completely okay. And you might have lots of complex thoughts. You might have conversations with other people. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be going on your brain and that's normal human behavior. And that's not going to ever clear up where you sit down and suddenly you're a clean slate. Don't expect that. It's not going to happen. What you do learn to do is it's th those thoughts, even if they start to rattle you or they're frustrating or having a, an anxious thought in your head, you just listen to them, you observe them, and then you just let them keep going. And if you do fixate on, on them, that's okay. Acknowledge that, you know what, I'm fixating on this thought right now because it's worrying me, because it's stressing me, and I'm going to try my best to let it go. I'm going to try to worry about it less. I'm going to try to think about why this is bothering me and maybe what I can do to move on and let that thing go. So meditation is just about being relaxed, being still, and just observing your thoughts without judgment, relaxing, and allowing yourself and allowing your mind to work the way that it wants to work. So the then what of meditation is try to be as consistent as you can. Try to do it at consistent times of day because that usually just makes it easier. But really, you just have to carve out the time and sit down and set your timer and do it. That's the biggest thing. And the more you do it, the more you're going to get into that deeper state of relaxation and calm faster. And then your meditation practice is really going to take off. For me, it took about two or three weeks to really start to feel like I wasn't anxious, that I, I just wanted to leap out of this sitting position and go about my day because I felt like my brain was too busy, that meditation wasn't right for me. But after a couple of weeks, it got really, got so much easier. I got really relaxed. It was almost like taking a nap in the middle of my day, even though I wasn't falling asleep. And it just made me feel more relaxed as a person. I felt more calm during the day. I stopped worrying about future stuff and past things as much. I just started to let a lot of those things go. Things that used to bother me, I just started to let them just fade out faster. And so you really have to trust the process and try to commit to it as much as you can. If you can do it every day, wonderful. If you can't commit to that, you could do it three days a week or two days a week or four days a week, that's great. So anything that you can start with is good. If it's five minutes twice a week, do it and be happy with it, be proud of yourself. You are gonna be visible sometimes, especially as an athlete where you're gonna have to do this, have to do this between games at a tournament or you're not going to have a place to, to break away to that's not in the public eye. That happened a lot of times with me where I had to meditate in the locker room with my teammates around or in the training room with other teammates around. And I had to feel, you know what, like, yeah, they might be looking at me like, why is he doing that? But you know what? 
it was valuable to me and it made a huge impact on my career. After that terrible season that I mentioned in the beginning, I had the best season of my career after that. I was an all-star. I led the league in most pitching stats. I did suffer an injury, but that was completely beside the point. I had such a turnaround mentally that next season. I was so confident and I visualized my success every day in my meditation practice. I cleared up a lot. I calmed down a lot in the game when I was in pressure situations. I just felt very in control and very relaxed. And I could just execute and let my body do what it knew how to do. And that's the power of meditation for athletes. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment below. Check out my book of mental skills for athletes. It's called This Slump Shall Pass. I'm really proud of it. It's gonna mean a ton to you. And it's really, really easy to read. It's very visual, filled with graphics and stories and lots of illustrated ways to get the points across that I think you'll really enjoy. So check those all out in the description below and I'll see you here in the next video.